guys, LarisaWithBecosi.net is here. Today I will show you how to hand knead a big blanket. This blanket will be 60 by 80 inches. It's a pretty big blanket. It's a good size for a king uh, size bed for uh, using it as a throw. Uh, and uh, it will be done with the felted merino. Let me show you this blanket. So this is a huge blanket, as you can see, and it's done with, as I said, with felted merino. You can see that it's still very nice looking. It's very soft, uh, beautiful blanket. And uh, we uh, will use 15 pounds of uh, felted merino wool for blanket 60 by 80 because it's pretty big and also because a felted merino is a little bit thinner than uh, super chunky merino wool. So anyway, uh, I will be using 15 pounds of cloud uh, super chunky felted merino wool. You can find it on uh, becosi.net. We have six colors pre-felted and we can felt any color of our 28 colors for you. So uh, let's get started. So guys, here is the close caption and on this uh, table you can see three uh, the same yarn super chunky mirror wool but three uh, weight of processing it or not processing it at all so this is just regular super chunky merino wool it's extremely soft and nice uh, but it also a uh, very gentle and needs a very gentle touch when you're knitting with that because it can be if you pull it hard it will break and also it has some peeling and shedding which is absolutely normal for merino wool it doesn't mean that it's a bad yarn or something it just it's quality this uh, super chunky merino wool in the middle has been felted in a dryer i have a video uh, in my videos couple videos before this one it shows how to do it what you do you just spray this regular super chunky merino wool with water from spray bottle and put it in a dryer depending on how much wool you have it could be 10 15 20 minutes and you can see that it's changing its structure it becomes more uh, it becomes fluffy actually bigger but at the same time it becomes stronger you cannot really break it and you maybe uh, see uh, even on the video that it's not as uh, peeling or shedding this one the third one is a uh, water felted uh, merino wool you can see that it's um, thinner it's still pretty soft and nice there is no shedding or peeling this yarn is ready to be knitted and that's what we will use today for our blanket you can purchase super chunky merino at becosi.net and felt it yourself at home uh, make it this way and you can also purchase felted merino wool like that we have six colors available a uh, wet felted completely uh, different and it's a uh, yarn that ready to be knitted and we can also felt wet felt regular super chunky merino wool uh, yarn for you you just uh, it will be um, available for sale on our website okay guys let's get started so we will start as usual with a loop make a loop like that this is a uh, tail this is working yarn make a loop insert your hand inside grab working yarn pull it through the loop pull it out this is your first stitch you can make it smaller or bigger by pulling yarn like that we will be keeping the the stitch about three and a half almost four inches like that uh, the reason we will be doing it because felted merino is uh, thicker and it, it is not as soft so uh, stitches will need to be a little bit bigger so now insert your hand inside the stitch grab working yarn and pull it out this will be your second stitch and uh, now we will be making a chain of 25 stitches 
some people are watching videos saying that I am crocheting. I'm not crocheting, guys. I'm uh, hand knitting, but they are right. This is the, the way I am casting on stitches, inserting hand inside the stitch. I've been walking yarn and pull it out. This is how uh, crochet is starting there casting on. When you're crocheting something, this is how you are uh, casting on the amount of stitches you need. So hand knitting is uh, the same way of starting as crocheting, but then the process is completely different. It will be uh, knitting, but in a different way, it will be hand knitting, not arm knitting, hand knitting. So we'll need 25 stitches to start. Okay, guys, so we have our chain of 25 stitches. It's a long chain. If you're making it uh, on the table, you will need a big table like mine or uh, just any desk or uh, kitchen table will work. So now when you have this chain, you turn it to another side, turn it basically upside down. So now we will pull out the first row. This is the first stitch, you're keeping it here. Now you will be using these knots in the middle of the chain. When you're using these knots, you are making the bottom of the blanket looking like this. It will look like a chain, beautiful chain. So you lift this knot, grabbing working yarn and pull it out. This is your second stitch. Uh, doing the same, lift the knot, insert your hand or two fingers, grab working yarn, pull it out. Next knot and keep doing this way until you pull out all 25 stitches. It will be your first row when you are done. So here is our first row and this is how it looks on the bottom. This is when you're using those knots that I showed you. So we pulled out our first row like that. And again, you see this uh, beautiful chain on the bottom. Now we will uh, start working on our next row. And uh, as usual, working yarn is laying in the dire direction where we're knitting. And in this case, uh, we're knitting from left to the right, our next row. So the same technique, guys, insert your, work, uh, insert your hand, grab working yarn and pull it out. This is your first stitch, insert your hand, grab working yarn, pull it out and keep doing this way until you need all stitches on the second row. Make sure you don't miss any stitches because if you miss a stitch, you will need to unwind the whole project. There is no way to fix it if one stitch is missed on the bottom. I suggest you count all the stitches not to miss it. Also make sure that all stitches are the same size. Like see, uh, one, uh, f uh, row number one and row number two stitches are the same size and try to make them a little bit loose or big. Uh, let's measure the size of the stitch we have. So you see the stitch is three inches inside from outside uh, on the top to the bottom, it's four inches. So this is actually the size of the stitch I recommend because this way you will be using less yarn. You can make it tighter, you can make it smaller, you can make it looking like, uh, like that. And some people really like uh, small and tight knitting, small stitches and tight knitting. Uh, you just need to be ready that you will need a little bit more wool for such product. At least one more pound, at least if it's blanket under six pounds, so then you will need seven. 
and if it's a blanket bigger than that uh, you will need a pound and a half or even two pounds more because the tighter the knitting the more wool you are using so here we are at the end of our row number two and we are knitting our stitch number uh, 25 this is how it's done and uh, now starting second row i do not need the first stitch it's very easy you just leave it laid here like that you will need it when you're coming back as the last stitch now you just skip it you don't do anything to it you just skip it it's laying here and you start with your second stitch insert your hand grab working yarn and pull it out so this stitch is still here see it's like it was knitted it's a little bit shorter that's why you can make it a little bit longer bigger this stitch because this stitch will be one for two rows why i'm doing it it's because if you skip the stitch you will have beautiful chain on a side uh, you will also not have a curling blanket on sides because if you don't skip the first stitch it will be curly and you will also use again more wool so by skipping the first stitch you are making your blanket more beautiful and you're also saving on yarn so again uh, keep working on your project inserting hand grabbing working yarn and pull it out keep the stitches the same way it's easy to measure without any ruler just take the stitch out and measure it on your big finger so when you're uh, taking it out you're pulling out the stitch you automatically insert your finger inside and you can see that from the top of your finger all the way to the uh, bone it will be the size of your stitch so just keep measuring your stitches this way and you will be having all the same size stitches so now we will be knitting this way here's our third row is done starting the next row again we are skipping knitting the first stitch the only first stitch we needed was the first row uh, now we just leave it laying here and go directly to the second stitch insert in your hand grabbing working yarn and pull it out and now we will work the same way all the way through the yarn we have usually it should be about 38 rows for the size 60 by 80 that we're making it's a big blanket it will be like a king size blanket not covering of course the whole king size bed but uh, the it will definitely cover the bottom part and it will be a nice throw for your king size bed so guys 38 rows and then i will come back and show you what to do next okay guys so uh now we need to connect uh two skeins and i will show you how to do it so the end of the felted marina will be looking like that we need to make it look like this so how we will do it you will need to spread the fiber as wide and thin as possible like that and then when you did it like this then you can pull and see it's uh, just showing you how strong a uh, felted marina is it's not really hard to break it so you need to like that okay so now we have two ends looking like that now we will need the felting mat and felting needle uh, you can buy uh, both of those in our store because of that net in the uh, accessories 
link uh, on the home page on the left then you're placing one part of the wool on the mat and the other one on the top then you're using your needle and you are felting these two pieces together what's good about felting wool like this into one piece that it will stay together basically for good because you will felt it together so you felt one side turn it to another one and then felt these two pieces together on this side and we will move this and so when you felt these two pieces together like that roll roll it to make it one nicely looking part and when it's rolled <coughs> excuse me then you will felt this edge together see like like that put it on one on another on the top the other on the top of the other one and then felt them to connect it and now here you can felt it on the sides too to make it thinner again you can buy felting needle and because of that net accessories link <coughs> so that's how it's done see now it's connected it's all together nicely connected or felted together so now we will keep knitting until we have 80 inches or until you use all of your wool and then I will come back and show you how to cast off the project okay guys now we are ready to cast off we have about four to five yards of the yarn left and uh, now you're taking two of the first stitches on your hand grab walking yarn and pull it through those two stitches making one you keep this one on your hand add another one the walking yarn behind not up front behind two stitches on your hand grab walking yarn pull it through and have one and add another one walking yarn on the back pull it through so what we're making we're cast, uh, this making this beautiful chain or casting off so one stitch on your hand add another grab walking yarn pull it through keep one stitch on your hand grab another grab walking yarn pull it through keep doing this way until you cast off all stitches and you have just one stitch left this blanket is really big so i will need to move it in front of the camera to cast off keep casting off until you're done with all your 25 stitches if you are knitting it's really loose you can go with one or two stitches uh, fewer if you're knitting tight you should have 25 26 stitches for this size 60 by 80 it's x large size so this is two last stitches the same way the working yarn going through now you have one stitch left take the end of your working yarn and pull it through and then pull it like that 
this is the end and I don't want to cut this piece because I will be making a little bit longer blanket from this wool so what you will need to do you will need to spread the wool as we did before on your end and when it's sprayed like that spread like that when it's really thin and fluffy you will pull to make it an even end like this then you will cast you will weave in the end on the end on underneath the chain and then when you have this tail left you will again use our felting mat and needle to finish this blanket to hide this end so this end will go underneath one of the stitches on the back spread the fiber put this one underneath like that that you wouldn't see just a stitch and then place it on the felting mat and carefully felt it carefully because you don't want it to poke one of your fingers you can really injure your finger with this needle because it's really really sharp so felt one side turn to another side and felt another side of the stitch the end of the wool like that now you have the end attached to one of the stitches on the back you can hide it between the stitches and that's how it will look like when it's done So this is our 60 by 80 blanket from felted merino wool. This is cloud color, light, very light gray color. And uh, you can get this wool at becozy.net. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to write them underneath this video. I always respond within 24 hours. Stay warm and be cozy.